Today in history, in 1978, the first version of the rainbow flag, which represents LGBTQ pride, was flown during the San Francisco Gay Freedom Day Parade. Welcome to What the Fuck History, where we discuss the wackiest and weirdest things that make us say, well, what the fuck history. I am your host, Zachary, and don't listen to whatever the TV tells you. Viking helmets were never that horny. My name's Megan, and I'm in the process of seeing how many large bouncing balls Amazon will currently ship to my house tomorrow. And I'm Matt. Today I learned two things. The first being that there's a plan for Parisians to poop in the Seine to protest the Paris Olympics. And uh, I came across a headline that was from 2021 that said that Pablo Escobar's cocaine hippos are now classified as people. I Wait, why are they, I, why are they classified as people now? Well, now I have to look it up. So two things. One, I yeah. did know about this shitstorm in the Seine. Yeah. Okay. Pun in, pun in pun co- well, it completely It's different intended. than Parisian shitting in the streets. So I just look. My two thoughts when I originally saw it was when they I, I heard like mention of it. I was like, guys, you want to turn the piss city into the shit city? Why are we doing this? And then I heard it was because that they were like, oh, we're gonna clean the Seine for the Olympics, and they're not actually doing really anything about it. And then the mayor and the prime minister, I think, were supposed to, like, go swim in the Seine to prove that it was clean enough. And, and people so wanted to pr- shit in it. The Parisians were like, we're going to shit in the Seine to be like, you're going wa- to swim in shit water, you fucking assholes. And I was like, all right, never mind. The French know how to protest. I'll let them do their thing. Yeah. They um, always knew how to protest. Like, they're, they take all of August so to protest. The the hippos to get to that yes uh and again this was a headline from a story in 2021 but i came across it and i had never heard it and i thought it was just eye-catching enough to be mentioned in a today in history so the hippos uh the offspring of the hippos are what are being classified as people however it's more sort of a loose like interested persons with legal rights considering the cocaine hippos uh, are breeding. And there was, the case was a question of like whether or not to sterilize the hippos so that they could not breed. Um, And so the ruling was made to uh, sort of curb sterilization efforts. Uh, But the ruling was made in the United States and the hippos exist in Colombia, so none of it mattered. That's true. We don't care about things that happen in Colombia. Like, sorry, we just don't. That's how it is. Uh, So, yeah, but that was fun. All right, everyone. We have reset our strikes to zero. We have played a very imaginary game of rock, paper, scissors. And the order for tonight is Zach, followed by Megan, followed by me. And you'll also have to watch us knock the rust off. And fluff out the cobwebs because it has been a good, like, three weeks since we've done this, so. Well, there's no cobwebs here. I'm fucking ready to go, boys. (laughs) I joked in my intro about the horny helmets, and it is true. Also, it relates to my topic. You can hear me out. First off, no horns were ever attached to fucking Viking helmets. That's just a weird thing that was decided a while back and was perpetuated by Richard Wagner operas and Gustav Maelstrom paintings of the 18th century. I did my fucking research. How are you going to know they're Vikings? Well, how are you going to know that they're Vikings if they don't have the hats? Yeah, no. That's what I'm saying. That was never a thing until the opera. Okay, but then how did people know that they were Vikings? How so it comes know? from actually like, paintings and drawings of the poetic Edda where large figures like Odin and other like gods were painted like painted and drawn with very ornate helmets but then like people who were did viking 
were never actually wore those kinds of helmets. It was like, uh, when you see, like, the people painted in the Sistine Chapel being, like, these, like, big, huge presences that are, like, not proportionate or realistic to actual people. Or, like, wearing clothing that is not realistic or proportionate to actual people. Same kind of idea with the Poetic Edda. That makes sense. So. I mean, I'm just saying, how do people know who anyone is without hats? Construction workers. Oh, yeah, no, hats, hats are important, police, and police hats officers. are what I'm talking about tonight. Hat. Be- Perfect. Because I, I want to talk perfect. about specifically battle hats tonight. I want to talk about helmets. My favorite helmets. I'm doing another fucking tier list, and this one is about the protection Good. of your dome. A the tier list for dome protection? For dome protection. That's, are condoms on the one list? One of the most. No, they're not. No. That's not a dome. That's a rod. <laughs> uh, but it has a dome to God, tip. why? Yes, it does. But I've already but done not two the dome, sex. not the dome we're talking about. I've already done two sex toy tier lists. I can't do a third, Matt. <laughs> Guys, you heard it here first. Zach is not talking about dicks this episode. No dicks this episode. But yes, so hold on to your hats and your butts, and we're going to get into it. For those of you at home, um, eventually, if you're you're part of our Patreon, we will post all the pictures from my helmet rant. But uh, going along in real time, I am going to be sending Matt and Megan pictures of the helmets that I am talking about. I said Um, in the after dark that this was going to play really well in the audio, but we'll see. It's going to be great. So starting off real strong, um, I'm going to talk about the horned helmet. And shut up. I know I just said that there were no horns, but fucking hear me out. But there aren't any (laughs) horns on helmets. There were no horns on Viking helmets. There were horns on the helmet of Henry VIII. Specifically, that okay. fucking guy. That fucking guy. That fucking guy. Um, this is rather a, a specific helmet that Henry VIII owned rather than an overarching style of helmet. But I just need to talk about it because it's so fucking dumb that it's just dumb. Okay. It was a gift from the Holy Roman Emperor Maximilian I to Henry VIII following the alliance of the HRE and England uh, after the War of the League of Cambria. And this is a horribly impractical helmet for any actual fighting, um, but it was rumored to be modeled after one of Henry's court jesters, and I am sending the image now. (laughs) It's dumb, it's silly, and it's ugly as fuck. Holy shit. It's so ugly. It's so ugly. It's what, why, what's with the glasses? What are the glasses doing? Uh, Why did they make the glasses look like they? He's gonna bore me with calculus. So remember that those are old timey glasses. That knows calculus. It's a goat that knows calculus. This is a goat that knows calculus. This is a goat that has a very strong nose. This is a goat with an advanced degree in calculus. This is an algebraic goat. This is a goat goat. that's just like, yeah, he's just like actually. That's what he sounds like. Yeah, no, he definitely sounds like that. I, yeah, no, maybe a little bit more nasal. Um, actually, ah. if you do, uh, ah. yeah, you like hair the cosine. <laughs> that's probably a little bit closer. Yeah, uh, this helmet is completely impractical. No one would ever wear it in battle. But for the memes, I have to give it three out of ten chainmail links. Oh, we're doing it by chainmail chain mail links. links. Yes, How else that's we cute. It? Well, I mean, look. It could be anything, right? Could be anything. It's me. I'm on With Zach, it could be anything. <laughs> I know he said anything. that he's not measuring anything by penises, but he <laughs> could give been it three out of ten penises. Could, could have been dicks per ball. I don't know. <laughs> wow. I wasn't even going there, but all right. <laughs> anyway, yes, three out of ten chainmail links for Henry VIII's horned helmet. Uh, next, I am, after the horned helmet, I am going to be going into specific styles of helmet rather than any specific, like, ooh, this historical helmet with a special name. Um, I'm going to go to the Bronze Age with the Greek Corinthian helmet, which is the Greek helmet that everyone thinks of when they think of the Greeks. Um, It's a solid piece of protection, but let's be honest, it 
It looks mad uncomfortable. It does. Well, it also looks like the tip of a peen. <laughs> it, it, it is a little phallic on the you top. You know, the... <laughs> we said we weren't going to do this, but you know no, what? Fine. immediately had the exact same thought as Megan, though. Like, it I does, looked at it, this... I looked at this and I was like, that's a penis. There is a bit of a bronzed mushroom tip on there, yes. Um, <laughs> a mushroom tip. So, yeah, it... It looks mad uncomfortable. It looks mad phallic. Um, the only way to get it off your head and, like, into a resting position of any sort is to just tip it backwards and let it just, like, kind of dangle there. <laughs> like, I'm not helping the metaphor here, but... Well, you it, did just say the word dangle. I did. I know. I heard it. All right. But it, it would, like, kind of just I, lean... Where is your nose supposed to go? The no, the nose. Oh, it's behind that that metal plate in the front. It's behind like, the nose part. Behind the nose part. No, I, I, you got it, a, I understand you wear where it, you flatten your nose out. I was gonna say, Megan, I do see your yeah. problem. Whereas the nose piece is completely flat, but there, the nose piece is completely flat. Look, you weren't allowed to be in the Greek army if you had a huge schnoz. That's all there was to it. Like, <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. I'm gonna look up. I'm, I'm gonna look up. Is it? Okay. Uh, when I read dark romances. <laughs> yes, go on. One of the attractive features is a Roman is nose. Like he had a is a Roman nose, right? Who an doesn't aqu- love a Roman nose? Is it nose? aquiline? An aqu an aquiline nose, and that is also a Roman nose for those of you at home. Yeah, and. I don't know if you've ever seen, like, a dude from Rome, like, the most Roman man you can picture, but they got, they got the schnoz, all right? They have, like, an un, an unimpenetrable nose bridge. Yes. That broke armies. Yes. I, I've sent an example so, of the Roman nose in the chat as well. How do you get that behind that mask? I... That's what I'm saying. That's the Roman nose. It looks like someone is... The nose takes up a quarter of that man's face. So, here's the thing. The Roman nose is Italian. We're talking about the Greeks, okay? Okay, well, look up a Greek man schnoz. I I feel like this is... Like, hey, I'm I'm not going to do that. How do you spell schnoz? I feel like it's getting weird. (laughs) Schnoz. Anyway, yeah, no, it's it's not really practical. It, it is practical, but it isn't practical as it, this is a Bronze Age helmet. Like, it's not like, well, the Greeks were really good at math. It was just like, hey, we have our make. It was form over function. So, like, hey, we need to mass produce these helmets. They all need to look good. They all need to hold shape. They all need to hit, take some hits. This is the Corinthian helmet. It's also, as I said, in the Bronze Age, so it's made out of bronze, and while bronze isn't as shitty as iron, it isn't the most resilient metal out there, and the Greeks basically did what they could with it, and that's why Bronze Age stuff is cool, but it's like, hey, it's not steel yet, okay? The Corinthian offer I, offers some pretty... Also, like... Oh, sorry, continue. What, what if... What if I have, like, a slightly... Like, wide head. You're fucked then, man. <laughs> you don't get to be in the army. Have you seen 300? <laughs> yes, that historically uh, yeah. accurate movie, 300. <laughs> I'm just, like, thinking, like, what if my head doesn't randomly go, like, concave in this area? So I think there's, like, and basically made so that there's room at the top. Because, think about it, you didn't have padding in these helmets. So That's true. it had like a little air bubble on top. You so, were essentially a kid putting a metal pot over his head and yes. charging into battle. So it, it had to be kind of snug in the like crown area. So there's a little bit of a bubble on the top. And like also if there was a lot of room where your nose was, it would just like bonk back and forth as you ran. Um, but yeah, I'm giving the Corinthian helmet a four out of ten chainmail links. It's pretty good. It's just not the best. Um, following up the Corinthian helmet, I am going to have to talk about the Barboot. 
Which who doesn't what, love a bar boot? Am I right? I don't love the bar boot. The bar. You don't. I don't. I think the bar boot is kind of boring because it's basically just the fucking medieval version of the Corinthian helmet. Like, I'm sending the picture well, now. It's it. it's just the medieval version of the Corinthian helmet. A bar boot. <laughs> A barboot, a Corinthian helmet but your and silver. Nose has some, but your nose has somewhere to go. Yes, your nose has somewhere to go with the barboot. You're right. It's usually built in like a Y or a T opening inside the front. I think, okay, so with this one, I would be scared that once I put it on my head, I can't get it off. <laughs> okay, no, yes, I, don't, I, I see that. I, I don't know that. why it's like... I don't know why it's triggering this fear in me, but it just, because the other ones aren't, I don't, but this one in particular is really like, oh my God, what if I put this head condom on I think it just doesn't come off? I think why that's happening is because the other pictures you have seen are a straight on picture, whereas this is a three quarter turn. So you can see the fullness of the back and that makes you go, oh my God, I'm going to like get my head stuck it's more three-dimensional in the imagery if that makes I any think sense all of them are just making me like very claustrophobic yeah they're the barbu and the corinthian helmet especially are like they feel very claustrophobic because it's just one giant fucking metal egg on the top of your head <laughs> like mm. um the barbu Loses points for style because it is just a ripoff of the Corinthian, in my opinion. But it gains points for durability because it's not as nearly pretty as its Greek cousin. But it is not, it's, yeah, it looks like the Wish version of the Corinthian helmet, but it's made of steel, so it's much, much better. So, like a two? Um. Yeah, like, what is, what is this, get? I'm scared of this one. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'm not gonna linger on a mediocre piece of midi uh, medieval Italian metalwork, so it gets, in summation, a four and barely a half chainmail links, because it's barely better than the Corinthian. I have to- I got, yeah, barely. I mean, I, the Corinthian at least looked better, but it does give you room, your nose has room. Your nose has room with- You've got the, room to have a nose. You got room to have a nose with the barboot. The barboot. But the Corinthian is just a prettier looking piece, in my opinion. Like, the the barboot is very utilitarian, whereas the Corinthian at least has some nice angles to it, you know? Um, moving on, I'm going to bring up the bassinet. The bassinet. And bassinets are, are for babies. Bassinets are also for battle, Okay. <laughs> Bassinet B is for Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Bears beats Battlestar Galactica. Battlestar Galactica. Yes, bassinets for battle. Uh, were dumb fucking looking helmets. Uh, I hate them. Send me but, a picture. But there is a version of the bassinet that is cool, and I get give it style points. Um, that's a traditional bassinet, which basically just looks Bro. like. Yeah. So much room for your face. So much room for your face in the I, bassinet. Yeah. So no, I don't feel claustrophobic in this one. I like that it sort of looks like I could also be an executioner, and it has like a little chain up at the top yeah. for like charms, like cell phone charms. Yeah. Like, you can put some some gibbets for your on your instead of gibbets on your croc, you put gibbets on your bassinet. <laughs> the fact that I know the word gibbet. Hey, man. It infuriates me on a daily basis. So I think as much as you guys are like, ooh, don't have to worry about being claustrophobic, this helmet's garbage. Okay. This helmet is so okay. much garbage well, because okay. all that room for activities in your face is also room for things to stab you in the face. Those are the activities you're going to be doing. Getting stabbed in Getting the face? Getting stabbed in the face. Like, well, stray arrow? Gonna kill you. Sword Zach, swing? Gonna I'm kill you. Mace? Gonna kill you. piece of headwear. Yeah? I would be more focused on which charms I can attach to my little chain as opposed to fighting in any sort of battle. And that's why you're not part of the English army. <laughs> that's fair. So this is what, like a two chain links? No, because there's more to it. Because this is a traditional early bassinet that was based on and influenced by the Byzantine and Scythian style Spangenhelm, which, again, Spangenhelm. 
it's basically an open-faced helmet with a big old pointy top and some ear coverage. And it sucks because there's nothing that protects the front of your face. However, the original bassinet opens up the possibility of the hoon skull. Or I'm sorry. The dog faced the bassinet. Um What? Is this like an attachment? Yes, it is an attachment. I'm sending a picture of the Hoon Skull because it's fucking glorious and I love it. Um The Hoon Skull is basically a bassinet head top with a piece in the front that's just a fucking cone. <laughs> Holy shit. I don't know how to feel about this piece of headwear. It's so it's, good. But it's, it's not like a good. Colander. It, like I a don't colander feel good about got that. stuck onto. I, again, I'm. No, wait. It has a hinge. It has okay. a hinge. I'm not scared of my head. It's got a hinge. Yeah. But how do you. This is not enough. That's not where my eyes are. Oh, no. Wait. That's not where anyone's eyes are. It's not well made. <laughs> It's so yeah. That's that's definitely not where my eyes are. Yeah, I think I think the bassinet sucks until it becomes almost comically sized and beak faced when you add the plate in front of it of the hoon skull, and it's so fucking stupid looking. But be, despite its stupidity, there is no way a glancing blow is digging its way into the front of your face. So three out of si- three out of ten chainmail links. For pure bassinet, six out of ten chainmail links for the Hoon Skull face plated bassinet. Fair I can't enough. believe you're giving this one a higher one than just like the normal. So okay, y- you're bassinet. thinking of the looks. I'm also thinking of practicality. Well, my eyes aren't there. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> again, again, this that's is what just the little for you to charge into battle with. Yeah, it's you're charging into battle, you're swinging the sword, you're going to hit something, and something's not going to hit you in the face. And that's the important part. So, again, the conical shape makes the sword swing up and away from your head, rather than digging into the metal plating. Heading over to Japan for our next contender. (laughs) Oh, okay, wait. They have to make sense. They do. We're going to talk about the Kabuto helm. because do they? Ar- All right, show it to me. Which is they weird do. because we classify them over in the West as Kabuto helms, rather, even though Kabuto is just the word for helmet in Japan. Well, yeah, that's like <laughs> yeah, Tai Chi, or uh, Chai Tea. Chai, chai Tea, yeah. Mm, we're or done. The River over here. Avon. Yeah. And I don't know if you know this map, but before we blew them up, twice uh-huh japan was a competent warmongering nation <laughs> yeah hey megan i saw a little documentary oh. called uh yeah mulan way back in the day so <laughs> that Which was china, china. I, I know that was china <laughs> yeah. i'm just okay. trying to ruffle feathers i'm just gonna bulldoze over that i'm sorry man <laughs> oh no, it's okay we need to I keep a, going anyways. i saw a little documentary called uh the Mulan Rouge, <laughs> which is like Mulan, but that took place in France. Yes. All right, we um, gotta keep going. Kabuta helm originally and for like historically was the first helmet used in Japan, and later just became an absolute drip piece for samurai. It looks kind an of absolute drip piece. I'm not over it. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't over it either. It's so good. It's kind of big uh, and looks kind of impractical, but because that's of so the funny material that was used in the way that it was plated, it was actually pretty light with a lot of overlapping plate work. Nothing obscuring the eyes, the face is pretty open, but it also has really great neck protection in the back, and because of its kind of conical shape upwards, any slashes that come down glance away from you. Great design. Overall pretty solid. They get pretty big and pretty ornamental and pretty impractical as they start to lose their function and but and i said become like more of a a showpiece but the vibes are immaculate seven out of ten easy after the kabuto helm we are going to head on over to the ottoman empire the ottoman turkish empire rather and i can i just say one more thing about the kabuto helmet though 
the the I do I do really love about the Caputo helmet yes. that it looks like it is trying to con- like commune with space. Yes, I mean it, a lot of like the Japanese helmets had like especially later on when they started to get more an- ornamental have like very big headpieces and like almost like. I think the ones on the sh- ones that I showed you kind of have the horns on them that almost like give like a dragon appearance. So it's a mm-hmm. scary showpiece as much as it is a all right, I don't want to get my head chopped off. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I just I think it is very funny. Also, like I don't know if you guys have been watching Shogun at all. Not yet. Um, I need to sit down for like 72 okay. hours and just binge it. No, I get this isn't any spoilers, but like obviously there are armies yes. in that show and depending on what you know daimyo they are under, like what lord they're under, their helmets are different. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. Like the the antennae pieces, mm-hmm. I know that's not what they're called, but the you know, the parts that look like they're commuting with space. Yeah. Um and I just Japan, really, it's just chef's kiss. Yeah, really, really great helmet design from the lightweight availability and also just the the overall shape of it. Um, But yes, so from there, we're going to move on to the Turkish Ottoman Empire, where we are going to talk about the Chichak, which later gets stolen by the Europeans, because that's what the Europeans do. Um, Sending the Chichak now. I... Really like the Chichak. It's very fun. I like this one. Ooh. It's really good. I like this one. I like the chain mail, like the chain mail veil. Yeah, so a lot of the helmets that I showed before had chain mail coifs underneath them, but this one had one specifically built in, called? which is great. It is called a coif. It is called a coif. It's called a coif? Yes. That's interesting. Now, I'm looking at this, at this picture, mm-hmm. and if I zoom in, what, what is this weird spoon oh in the front that has been welded onto the front i think that's ornamental and or to show like status it's an the thing ornamental about, spoon. okay the thing about the ottoman it's empire is spoon. like as much as they're really good at conquering shit they're also fancy as shit and like turkish ottoman they're stuff is like as shit. same with like the byzantine empire it's like it's good at what it does but it also is really good at art and shit so like <laughs> They make oh, that's fair. war I, in art in and of yeah. itself. So, like, I like even the gilding on this one. Like, the gold leaf on this helmet is fucking glorious. Um, Zach, we might have to start turning this into a yeah. speed round, bud. Yep, I'm almost done. Don't worry. Okay. So, well, also, no, I mean, I don't think you have to speed up. We can do what we did last time and just do two. That's true. Like, I'm fine with just telling mine. Okay. I'm having a good time learning about helmets. I'm so, I'm so into the helmets. having a good time learning about helmets. I just don't want it to be a routine thing where we yeah. negate a story for other stories. But no, I know this go is go off, sis. Go off. Uh, I'm going off. So I want to see like if this is a to the point of the spoon. I want to see if this is meant to be like someone of low rank. How many spoons do you get on your helmet if you have like a higher? How many spoons? How many spoons you get? Spoons yeah, you I don't get? know. I don't know. Um, Maximum yeah. spoons, Turkish helmet. <laughs> so, again, the Chichak was later stolen by the Europeans and turned into what would become known as the lobster tail pot helmet. <laughs> Lovely. Oh, ugly as shit. <laughs> Which is ugly as shit. <laughs> but Just has the same idea minute. as the Chichak. Ugly as shit. Which there are no is. Spoons. So. The, there's no spoons. There is a visor in the front like the Chichak. There is a back tail that is layered like a lobster tail. That's why it's a lobster tail pot helmet like mm-hmm. the Chichak. And it also has the ear pieces um, down on the side. Now, the thing, I believe the Chichak actually translates to flower, if I'm not mistaken. Because the idea is that all the pieces of the Chichak helmet were kind of like held on by rings and were like separated so they can move more freely and have like less weight and more like uh flexibility like the petals of a flower and Mm. the same idea was with the lobster tail pot helmet where the sides can kind of move a little freely that back can move freely it offers a lot of mobility 
and the lobster tail pot helmet was mostly used for horse riders and cavalry. And that's great because there's nothing on the face of this helmet, which leaves you open to attack. But when you're on horseback going mock fucking stallion, you're way faster than infantry. So fuck it. And the fluted back of the lobster tail helps a lot with deflecting arrows, which is the bane of cavalry. So I guess you're fucking covered. So just don't get shot in the face. That's your only goal. Overall, pretty solid helmet. Lobster tail, despite its ugliness, is great. It's pretty utilitarian. Yeah. The Ottoman Turkish I wish version, it was the prettier. Chichak, supplemented with a male coif, looks way cooler. And also, again, as I said, I'm a sucker for pointy hats and gold leaf. Six out of ten. Nice. That was really funny, though. It's ugly as shit. It's ugly as shit, <laughs> but it's really practical. I, at this point... Yeah, I mean, my head's not getting stuck in it, yeah. which is really what really good, which is right? Really, what's helping us? Yeah. Um, at the this yes point, as I'm as I'm getting towards the end of my list here, I am now legally obligated to bring up the German Great Helm, or the Pot Helm, or the Bucket Helm, or the Barrel Helm. It's all the same name for the same fucking helmet that everyone equates with Crusader bullshit. Are you obligated? I'm gonna send you a picture I like of how it. He's like, I'm legally before I get required. too heated because. Are you angry Legally because right. it's Germans or angry because no. it's ugly? It's not an ugly helmet. It's just... I don't know how to put this. Okay. Other than... Well. I, I Sorry, delete uh, that one. I'm entering this into the lobster helmet twice. I... This is your stereotypical knight's helmet. This is your stereotypical knight's helmet. It is a big fuck you hunk of metal that can take a beating... And it wasn't until much later that it really gets a rounded top on it. So a hefty enough downward swing when you're still in it won't fucking kill you. Uh, the design has almost no ventilation. Uh, so good luck breathing while wearing 55 to 75 pounds of bullshit strapped to your body. Uh, the helmet is contoured, is, is countered, sorry, not con contoured, by simply using a blunt weapon rather than a bladed weapon and turning this tin can into recycling. I have so much beef with the Great Helm, if you could not tell. Is it because you don't want to go feel to the Holy disdain. Land? I, I don't like the Great Helm. It's, okay. it's just a me thing. It's personal, because I'm the guy that has to hate whoever is on top. And the Great Helm is like the helmet that everyone knows, as you said, Matt. Yeah. However, I have to acquiesce and realize that it is a good piece of medieval engineering and knightliness and i'm gonna have to give it a seven out of ten uh, much to my own chagrin holy shit can we have a conversation about the fact that you just used the word acquiesce i like my sat words my dude i i had to stand on a fucking step ladder to reach the top shelf for that <laughs> you're welcome education <laughs> I have to now give also an honor honorable mention to the Steckelm or the Frog Mouth Tilted Helm. Oh, I love this already. It's so good. The vibes again, immaculate on the immaculate frog. Vibes. The Frog Mouth Tilted Helm. Oh helm. shit! Yes. The oh yeah. <laughs> the only reason it gets an honorable mention is because it wasn't actually a battlefield piece of armor. It was pretty much only used in jousting tournaments, but man, it's fucking goofy and I love it. Um, My eyes don't exist anywhere near that opening. <laughs> I'm also not going to give a review, not a no, no nothing out of 10 because let's be honest, it's basically just medieval cosplay and that does not deserve a rating. It's literally just a hunk of metal with a slit in it. <laughs> but it looks like a frog head. This is your old school racing helmet. Is what yes. This is. Um, but now after like 40 minutes of me talking about helmets, <laughs> we're finally here. We're at the end. I'm going to talk about my favorite helmet. The one that I demand be seen in the S tier from now until eternity. I looked into the future. It doesn't get any better than this, folks. I used my godly powers to demand and foresee that the Salé, my bay, is the greatest helmet ever invented. <laughs> oh my god. I fucking the love the Salé. 
Salé away. Are you joking? It looks like you can pour the Salé dressing out of this thing. <laughs> the Salé is a, a work of art. I love it. It's almost like the lobster helmet, but different. But better. But better. So Are these not the helmets that the orcs my... wear in Lord of the Rings? It is the helmets that the orcs wear in the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Is that why you like it? No, they're just the most practical helmet ever, and I love them for it. It's form and function. Chef's kiss. I mean, the good news is that the eyes do be where the eyes go. The eyes are where the eyes go, and well, normally I give a, a, a hit of points to having anything open on a helmet especially when I'm sitting there looking at the whole bottom of my chin is fucking exposed. The Salé originally was made with an open bottom. Um, there's actually versions of the Salé that are like a light version of the Salé that were given to armor uh, archers that had like a fully open front. But the thing about the Salé is like that really e expansive curve on the back end that is really good for, again, distributing weight and force away from the wearer so like you're running around in battle and someone tries to bonk you on the back of the head it's just sliding off you baby so that's true again the light version that archers had had an open face but like if you're getting stabbed and you're an archer you fucking lost the battle anyway <laughs> like if the if the infantry has made it to the range line it's over baby like yeah, you didn't and do your job well enough. You didn't do your job well enough. And as I said, the Salé has the open bottom on it, which, again, normally I dock for having any exposed flesh. But the good thing is that the Germans came in and made the German version of the Salé, which has a bevor on the bottom, which is a piece that covers the front of your chest, the front of your neck, and your chin. Now he looks like a Cyberman. Yeah. Um, the helmet was popular in Italy, it? France, and Germany for good fucking reason. Mm -hmm. Um, and it protects the wearer's neck. I do neck. like the attachments. You like the what? I like the attachments. The attachments are nice. You get some fun attachments to it. Um. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it basically becomes a full helmet with the bevor attached. And you can wear a chainmail coif underneath it if you want, or an arming cap. Um. But the front visor allows for great protection, and you can actually see out of it. You can move the visor so that way you're not, like, having a full face coverage if you're, like, in camp talking to people. Great protection in and out of combat. Nice ventilation. Nice overlapping plates. Just fucking nice. The Salé is the best helmet. Sadly, the Salé does get phased out in favor of the closed helm, which is, again, like the stereotypical night bullshit helmet. Um, but, like, I get it because you're talking about, like, full-on protection. I can't really argue with how protective a fucking closed helmet is. It's, it's a lot more claustrophobic, yeah. but it is... Hey, I love that the idea that it can glance off the back of your helmet, but if the whole back of your helmet is fully encased, well, you don't really have to fucking worry about it, do you? Oh, shit. That's the most claustrophobic helmet you've sent us. It is the most that claustrophobic. That is the most claustrophobic, but yeah. I am Iron Unless Man, you know? the face opens? Does the, I bet the face opens. The face opens up. So... A lot of change the fact okay. that the back closes all the way around me. Yeah, the back closes yeah, all the way I around mean, you. You have, like, a full neck plate that goes down over the top of you. There's different versions. Like, this version here that I showed you actually has, like, layered plates. So you have a little bit more mobility. There are other ones from the 15th and 16th century that, like, have just a big fucking hunk of metal on the bottom. So it's a little more rigid. Uh, it is very claustrophobic. I think what's unfair fortunate though is like i understand in terms of mm. we are just making a helmet that protects us better is that we're losing a lot of the finesse you know yes. the riz the riz does lose some the riz is fading yeah i mean yeah the riz fades i will say as i said the the german salé gets kind of 
phased out for closed helmets. However, the Sale does make a little bit of a triumphant return in the World War I Stahlhelm, uh, which was Stahlhelm. the German style helmet for World War I was modeled after the Sale. So. Yeah, I just, I mean, I just, my favorites, I think, aesthetically are definitely the Ottoman and the Japanese, but I also yeah. understand. Man, that, the T, the, the one. Brog helm. The bronze one. Oh, the penis? That you can't fit your nose in. <laughs> the penis one is just, it's crazy to me. Yeah, the dick helm is bad. It's. <laughs> The dick helmet is bad. It's mostly the nose issue for yeah. me still. Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. My... This helmet's just ugly. The last one you sent. There's just a hat. That well that that's the, the World War One German helm modeled after the Sale. It's just a hat. It's just a hat. Just I mean, a hat. That's why I didn't I, I, I was like, hat. I'm gonna do everything industrial era and before. Yeah, that makes sense because they just turn into hats. They just turn into while. hats after a while. Um, my closing remarks on the salle is the closed helm offered better protection while being more claustrophobic. I like the salle for its beauty in design as well as its functionality. But in ranking, I can give it 9 out of 10 chainmail links because despite my love for this helmet, people still died wearing a salle, so I can't call it perfect. It's true. Yeah, I mean, there's only so much that a helmet can do. Can do. Um, yeah. Especially when the helmet is suffocating you. <laughs> That's why I like the salle. It's not suffocating. No, the salle is fine, even though I do think that the eyes are still a little low. Yeah. I mean, look, but you're telling me like, that if, if they let you put a little gold leaf on your salle, you wouldn't be in love with it? Oh no! I if I, if I could put like Bisco Girl water bottle stickers, on, <laughs> <laughs> I would be bad already. Yes. <laughs> like put a coexist sticker on. It. <laughs> put a coexist st- sticker in my salle before I gut someone with a fucking bike. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna send you to Nirvana, brother. Get ready. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> my helmet says it. <laughs> oh god. Live laugh love on my oh. salle. <laughs> Live laugh love is the last thing you see cuz it's on my forehead. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> but that's yes. That's my ranking of some helmets tonight. Woo. Yeah, that was a good tier list. That was pretty comprehensive. I I know for next time that I don't need to do like nine fucking things. I can just do like four. I mean, I had a good time. I I liked learning about helmets. I learning about helmets, helmets is is good, and we'll be able to post them in the Discord so that people can see them. Whereas you yeah, people can... at home have to look them up yourself, mm, or you just join Patreon yourself. so you can be part of our Discord. Whoa. Yeah, join Patreon, <laughs> you true. silly geese. Anyway, <laughs> that's my uh, story. I can I can jump into mine. Yeah, yeah. If we're interested, okay. Uh, Does so that mean mine the, is the one getting sacrificed tonight? I guess, yeah. Unfortunately, Sacrifice. I'm already, I'm already starting. <laughs> She's already started. Uh, there's I'm no already, stopping her I'm now. Already, there's no stopping. Like Sisyphus's ball um, rolling down the other side of the mountain. Just like Sisyphus's balls. Uh, <laughs> so, this was not supposed <laughs> to be a horny episode. I'm not making it into one. I just call it as I see it. Uh, so my story is called the OG Nerd Riz Master. Oh. And yeah. So I've said it before, but I'll keep saying it on this podcast that we do. Uh, you could have way cooler jobs back in the day. Yes. Like Without way cooler. Question. Like. Factories in the industrial complex might have ruined everything for us because I can't make a living as being like 
a Belgian Freemason, clockmaker, musical instrument maker, and inventor anymore. Like, I can't be any of those things or all of those things. That was a um, comprehensive list, and I think that you're going to tell us about a band who did all of those things, and I'm <laughs> interested, but also feel like I'm in danger. Yeah, you should be. I mean, I don't think you're in danger, but those are just some of the jobs that... Uh, that were listed on my man John Joseph Merlin's resume. And yes, his last name is Merlin. Zach, which the man is pretty from history cool. can't hurt you. Uh, okay, he but can. his name's Merlin. That makes me think that he can reach through time. That's true. He probably, he invented a way, the, probably. The chances of him hurting you are low, but never zero. We'll say Yeah, that. yes. Never zero. So, Merlin, uh, he was not the wizard. Um, that we're all and yet of, every although... time you say it this episode, I am going <laughs> also never refer to him as anything other than Merlin, please. Right? No, yeah, but Merlin. I'm just gonna picture him yeah. in like a big blue robe. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I, I mean, he did perform a wizard wizardry of a kind, right? Okay, uh, Magic wizardry. He, he, yeah, just. You know, just wizardry in general, you know. So he wasn't famous for being the wizard. Uh, well, he was kind of famous for being the wizard. But he was also famous for having two first names and creating robots, which were called automatons back in back in the past. Oh, Automaton. shit. Uh, I think automatons. I know about this guy. Excellent. Uh, so you can jump jump in if if you remember anything that I leave out. So he was born in 1735 in what is now known as Belgium and was before known as something else. He was the third of six kids, which was a tame number of kids for the time. And from the ages of 19 to 25, he lived in Paris and was involved in the Paris Academy of Sciences, which was pretty prestigious to get into. Good for uh, him. Merlin arrived in England in 1760 as the technical advisor to the new Spanish ambassador to London because you could have just any job you wanted. Which is just a fancy way to say court wizard. He was a court wizard. That's, there it is. Uh, He also helped the Princess of Wales for a few years later complete a large barrel organ how she found out that he could do that i don't know the internet was not around what the fuck is <laughs> um, a barrel organ it's a big ass organ all right made Just out a... of barrels made out of barrels <laughs> it is genuinely like kind of crazy to me that she even found him and was just, she was like I want what I want to spend money today. <laughs> and she was like I want to play a barrel organ. Who's going to make that for me? And then she's like I've heard tell of a man named Merlin who's good at making organs. This technical wizard. This technical wizard who's uh also the technical advisor to the Spanish ambassador somehow. So a year later just posting he in the chat what a barrel organ looks like. Oh, thank, oh, thank you. God, because I also didn't look at it. All right. It's not a big-ass organ. Made out it's of It's a small-ass organ. Oh, okay. It's a, isn't that, like, the thing so that it's they called make monkeys a barrel dance organ, to? I think, because of the tube inside, which would be yeah. the barrel. Oh, the tube. And it essentially just continuously uh, plays the same song. Okay, isn't that the thing that like in in sad French movies they make the monkey dance to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what. That's I That's exactly what I was thinking it's too. Our... Yeah, they the French love that shit. <laughs> uh, they love sad monkeys dancing to repetitive barrel organ music. That's oh my just a God. fact. <laughs> I just, just love the like what, the caption. The French love that shit. They love that shit. So a year later, after he makes this barrel organ, he meets a child Mozart, who then played the barrel organ that he made. So that was an honor. Um, 
Baby, remember, Baby <laughs> Mozart guess. was still a virtuoso, so. <laughs> He was a he was a virtuoso, but like if a five year old is just like insufferably good at something, I just want to hit them. <laughs> so <laughs> that's <laughs> like, I don't give a shit, dude. Stay in your lane. Stay humble. Uh, you heard it so, here, folks. <laughs> if you have a problem, Megan will slap your five year old. <laughs> I fucking hate five year olds. <laughs> They're like three and five year olds. They're just. They're cognizant enough where they're like, ooh, I can be good at things, but they're not good at those things, and they think that they are, and they're just like, they're mean about it. And I'm like, okay, I, I'm going to humble you real quick um, by just being better, by being an adult. So in 1766, Merlin worked as a essentially, like, an apprentice mm, yeah. or a mechanician um, with a British jeweler and goldsmith. So during this time, he was like, yeah, making jewelry is really cool, but I want to make an automaton. <laughs> and the automaton that he made was called the Silver Swan. And this thing is like his, is the most famous one that he made. Mm -hmm. He was like, it was a one-off. He was just like, you know what? I'm going to be the best at this the first time I do it right out the gate. So this thing is kind of crazy because it's a life-sized, driven by clockwork swan that includes a music box. And it sits on a stream made of glass rods and small silver fish can be seen like swimming in the water as the mechanism plays. Yeah. Which, it's really pretty. Um, and, I'm gonna find like, a video of it, it right now. Yeah, I mean, find a, it is really cool. Like, the glass rods are kind of dope, the way that they move. It looks like water. So the, so, the uh, silver swan is also a barrel organ? <laughs> <laughs> he loved barrel organs. This man loves barrel, loved barrel, organs. barrel organs. My man. <laughs> well, Belgium is, like, close to France, and the French love that shit. <laughs> I think that's the title so, of the episode. The French love that <laughs> the shit. French love that shit. Yeah. Well, they loved that helmet too. Yeah. They, that helmet yeah, looks like a penis. Shit. Did you send a picture of it? I sent a, a video. Oh yeah, it's so pretty. Like that is, that was made in the 1700s. Damn. Um. So. Overall, the guy just loved inventing and socializing to the point where these two things combined and he earned himself the reputation of being a bit of an eccentric, which I ask you if you're an inventor and not considered an eccentric, are you even inventing? No. Because, yeah, like, no. You're going to tell like, Willy Wonka to... not to be eccentric? Fuck off. That's what I'm saying. Like, are you going to, what What are you going to do? Tell a painter not to paint, like, and, and be a little weird. Guys, can I just uh, say, on the point of Willy Wonka, just remember that Grandpa Joe is a villain, all right? I need yeah, everyone who listens villain. to this podcast consistently to remember that Grandpa Joe is the worst character in Willy Wonka. And Willy Wonka willingly sacrificed children to his Oompa Loompa army, okay? Yeah. Grandpa Joe yeah. is the worst. I mean... He is the worst. Um, that being established, foundationally, uh, Merlin <clears throat> took advantage of being a social inventor. Uh, he took advantage of the balls and parties of the town oh. to promote himself. And he would arrive in costume even when that wasn't the dress code. He made his own dress code. I Was his costume already. a blue robe? And a Maybe. large glass orb? He would just... No, it's even better. Uh, so, we get to his greatest invention. During one such... And it's not a barrel organ, before you ask. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> It's not a barrel organ. So during uh, one such party, Merlin arrived wearing roller skates, which he had just invented. They were hot off the presses. 
And to show these off, he rolled up into the party playing the violin and where he proceeded to utterly whiff it so bad that he crashed into and broke a mirror along with the violin he was playing and he injured himself pretty badly. <laughs> but man, did he look really cool before he crashed. But respect. But respect. Did he... But, like, respectfully, did he looked pretty cool before he crashed. Before he biffed um, it. Yeah, I mean, t- even Tony Hawk fell a few times before he invented some of the world's coolest skating moves, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. So, <laughs> sure. Um, eventually, he curated his own museum with his own inventions, which... He called the Museum of Musical Instruments and Mechanical Inventions, uh, which isn't a very creative name, but he was using all of the creative juices to make more inventions for his own museum. And this was a place where his friends could meet up and have some tea and see the exhibits. And around 1785, Merlin was just like, the museum is not enough for me. I am going to propose the construction of what he called the Necromantic Cave. Hell yes. Uh, and... <laughs> yeah. Um, so he was like, I want to build the necromantic cave. And people are like, what the fuck are you talking about? He's like, no, it's going to be really cool. I'm going to dress up as the wizard Merlin. And <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm going to entertain people with my own instruments and inventions. And people were like, you don't have to do this. You have your own museum and he was like it's not enough i have to do this i don't know why i don't know why he had to be dressed up as merlin to do this i do panache yeah that's true and the panache and the riz like i was talking about the riz as Uh, mentioned yeah do do, as mentioned do you guys remember that wonderful movie megamind i do yeah the the ladies love remember when he's sitting there being like the different what you're a villain, all right, but you're not super. You're and not what, a super villain. What makes you're you not super? super presentation, baby. That's like, right. Yeah. Presentation. And he comes out of his own head. Yeah. Like insane. Presentation's yeah. important. He absolutely and he has had the to black be Merlin. Mamba on. That's what I'm saying. So obviously, the other people. He was before. He was ahead of his time. Yes. Because they were like, we don't, we don't understand why you have to be dressed up as the wizard to do this and so cool. the necromantic cave never launched yeah that's what i'm saying because it's fucking cool like let me be a wizard jesus christ and respectfully and <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to be respectful <laughs> respectfully um so the necromantic cave was unsuccessful because people just like couldn't see his vision so Short-sighted. there is it's short-sighted truly uh, the Age of Enlightenment had only just dawned, so people, uh, some people just were still in the They weren't cave. enlightened. <laughs> they weren't enlightened. Um, so there is a regist- registry of this absolute legend of a man getting married in 1783, and the couple eventually has two children, but the marriage was kept separate from Merlin's social life. Uh, he had a reputation as an absolute legend to uphold. So... He couldn't. Well, marriage was just gonna hold him down, um, if it if it got out. So around 1793, it seems that Merlin withdrew from public life after the death of his wife, but he did keep advertising inventions up to 1795 because there ain't no rest for the wicked. Money don't there grow on trees. There were rumors that money don't grow on we trees. We got bills to pay. I got mouths to feed. That's as much of it's that song as his... we can sing before we get copyright stricken. <laughs> That's true. Also, very unclear what his bills were because this guy's just like fucking around for his whole life. <laughs> um, but then the rest of it is just, just finding like, out. It, yeah, he never did, really. Uh, so there were rumors of his ill health during this time. His last appearance was in 1803, where he appeared in Hyde Park in a carriage without horses, powered by a windlass. Um, so he was just, like, s- sailing in a carriage Fuck in yeah. Hyde Park. <laughs> Which is, like... 
<laughs> and then he died that year, and his collection was auctioned off, but a lot of the pieces went to museums and private collectors, and you can still see some of them today if you, you know, go to the right museums. Hell yeah. Um, yeah, he's a cool guy. I looked him up because I was interested about who made, like, the first roller skates because I was, like, rollerblading. I'm like, oh, I wonder... I wonder who made these, and it's this guy. This this guy did it. Uh, he was like, "What if, what if I went fat? What if I invented faster?" And not only did he do it, but he debuted them On while wheels. playing a violin. <laughs> yeah, he was like, and then what if I told people how cool they are by playing the violin and then absolutely beefing it, <laughs> eating eating shit, like. <laughs> shoveling it up. <laughs> um, I like this guy, though. Yeah. He's pretty cool. Wild. Like, I I do like that his name is Merlin, too. I think that, like, gives gives the whole story more more pizzazz. Yeah. Because he really did lay... He laid into it. He was just like, yeah, I want to be Merlin. I am Merlin. Yeah, I I would do it. People people just didn't get him. They didn't. He was a visionary. People yeah. Were just like you, you don't. You're not allowed to make the necromantic cave. <sighs> That's dumb. I know. If I ever come up to people and like I want to make a necromantic cave, the only thing that I want to hear people say is yes. When do you want to do it? <laughs> what's your budget? <laughs> yeah. What's your budget? I just want like a round of yeses. Yes. 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 And yes. 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 Like, yes. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's. That's it. That's all I want to hear. And that's so, all you will just hear. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. Just keep it in mind. Like if I. Megan's ever necromantic chat, cave, twenty twenty five. Twenty twenty five. Yes. yes. That's, I'm going to run for, pre- it's too late to run for president, but <laughs> next round, <laughs> join the necromantic cave party. I would, I would but do that's it. That's my story. I would. I would. I would. Uh, yeah. Well, All I right. think that brings us to the end of the episode. Yeah, I think so. Well, I think that brings us. Thank you very much, folks, for being here with us tonight. We really appreciate it. We do. Um, we talked about it every time, or not every time, sorry, a little bit this uh, episode, and we talk about it every time at the end of the episode. Um, you can follow us on Patreon if you want to help support our efforts monetarily, um, which is patreon.com slash Productions. You can subscribe to a $3, $5, or $10 tier. That'll give you different bonuses depending on the tier. Um, yeah, patreon.com slash Productions. If you can't support us monetarily, we understand that. As we said, we got bills to pay, we got mouths to feed, and we know that you do as well. So you can go join us over on our socials, facebook.com, looking up the Triumvirate Productions, the Triumvirate under, sorry, on Instagram, you can find us at the underscore Triumvirate underscore Productions. Um, And again, that patreon as well uh also if you want to share us with a friend and if you've shared us with all your friends and they're sick of hearing about us we know you're not and we thank you for that but you can go over on itunes and spotify and give us a rating and review and that helps bump us up the charts so thank you once again for joining us it's been a pleasure i ranted for so long about helmets and i just i'm i'm fulfilled i'm satisfied i'm happy (laughs) what the fuck history (laughs) 